Hello everyone, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts. This is Prehistoric Facts Special Episode number 188. We're going to be talking about a prehistoric mammal uh, today, and that mammal is Odobonosotops, so a marine mammal. And uh, yeah, so this is a possibility of what Odobonosotops uh, looks like uh, the, by this artist rendition. So a very nice uh, looking uh, piece of art right there. And some information about Odobonosotops. The name Odobonosotops in Greek means whale walks on a walks on tooth, and uh, its its length is 6.9 feet or 2.9 2.1 meters. Excuse me, 2.1 meters. Weight is 330 to 14 or 1,433 pounds. Lived 7.2 to 3.6 million years ago in the Pliocene epoch. So this is during the time of the age of mammal, deep in the time of the age of mammals, and fossils are found in Chile and Peru, and was described by Moison in 1993. So this is an animal that was discovered nearly 30 years ago. So that is that is pretty cool. So here's a map of South America, and so we actually have. Chile, which is the skinny country on the western side of South America, the skinny country right here, Chile, and Peru is this orange uh, uh, country right here on the western part of South America, on the northern part. So Odobonosotops fossils are mostly going to be found in southern Peru and in parts of northern Chile. And then uh, mo most of what I know, the holotype is based on a just based on one skull. And so that one skull uh, is what it's basically known for. And so, yeah, there's not too much of a skeleton, but uh, yeah, there is a skull though. More information about Odobonosotops. It belongs to the Artiodactyla family. So it's an Artiodactyl. So it's the even-hooved, even-hooved uh, uh, mammals. So this would include like uh, pigs, Deer, uh, hippos, you know, those types of mammals. So even hooved uh, mammals. So mammals, they have two or at least four hooves. So that is, that is actually pretty interesting right there is that it's part of that type of group of mammals. And it's part of the Cetacea. So it's the part of the marine uh, mammals, so like say walruses and porpoises, whales, those sorts of things, and it's part of its own group as well, called Odobinosotopsidae, and so this also includes porpoises too, and even like uh, uh, types of um, uh, whales that actually have like uh, uh, distinguishing features on them, like say narwhals. Narwhals are part of this group. And so that's why they got that like uh, uh, tusk-like horn uh, on their forehead. Mainly males have those. And of course, Odobinosotops, like narwhals, uh, do have tusks. And they have tusks going on each side uh, of the jaw, of the upper part of the jaw, uh, of the, in the part of the skull. And so females are going to have even, pretty much. Uh, tusks that are pretty even in length. Whereas males, males have a longer tusk on one side. And so the males probably use those longer tusks to joust each other uh, during mating season. And so narwhals do that too. And even like walruses do this too, because walruses uh, do have jousting uh, matches for, for the males. And so these, these uh, fights can get pretty pretty uh, gnarly and so that's that is a uh, an interesting thing about the behavior of uh, Odobonosotops and Odobonosotops would have a swimming motion that is up and down too so uh, it has a fluke so like a uh, tail that you see on dolphins and whales uh, and they have that up and down motion for a swimming motion not side to side like fishes or crocodiles and so that way the environment in which Odobinosotops lived in would have been warm and subtropical. Uh, there would have been coral reefs and kelp that were around in, its in the environment that Odobinosotops lived in in the oceans. And of course, uh, there was other types of animals too, like invertebrates, so like your swids, uh, 
and like uh, say uh, nautiluses, clams, jellyfish, you know those sorts of things. Uh, other types of fish that were around there too. Sharks, rays, uh, sea turtles, porpoises, which it's part of the same group of, and also whales. There would have been whales during this time too. Now, Otobanosotops will definitely have some predators. It will definitely have some predators. The first predator that it is going to be encountering is juvenile megalodons. And so juvenile megalodons would have been about the size of the largest great white sharks. And so megalodon, juvenile megalodon would definitely be preying on uh, Otobanosotops, adult, juvenile, you name it. Other types of sharks would have been uh, uh, feasting on Otobanosotops. And of course, the toothed whales, toothed whales would be able to uh, able to eat uh, Otobanosotops. So like uh, early sperm whales, uh, even like uh, uh, early like versions of orcas. And so those would be the types of uh, animals that these, uh, that Otobanosotops would be encountering and be wary of. And so, yeah, that, that would be the, the case right there. But uh, Otobanosotops would be feasting on, like, say, worms, clams, uh, those sorts of things. It would just be eating like invertebrates. The extinction of uh, Otobanosotops is mostly due to climate change. Now, during the end of the Pliocene, the oceans were cooling. And so the, so the ice caps that are in the North Pole and the South Pole, so basically Antarctica and also in the Arctic regions, uh, the ice sheets were growing. And so that means is that the currents are going to change and even the temperatures of the oceans are going to change. And so the equator will still be warm. So Otobanosotops, it would only be, it would be only being in those types of regions in the equator. Now what this does, it, it does actually limit what Otobanosotops can eat. And so that also comes into for, comes into fact here about that its prey is going to disappear. And so the prey that it relied upon disappeared and also other types of animals would have been competing for the same food sources and those food sources became pretty limited for Otobanosotops to, ha to, ha to get and so Otobanosotops disappeared uh, in the fossil record. And so and also the types of environments that like say on land and in the oceans would have been nearly similar uh, to today, except uh, the creatures uh, in uh, the oceans would have been a little tad bit different and a little bit crazy looking. So like uh, uh, toothed whales, uh, sea, like uh, toothed seals would have been crazy looking. Sharks would have been a lot bigger, that sort of thing. But yeah, but extinction of Otobanosotops is mostly due to climate change and also it's prey disappearing. So here's a possibility of what Earth looked like during the Maya in the Pliocene, excuse me, in the Pliocene, but this is mostly from the Miocene. So you can definitely see it's, it, it almost looks like uh, today's uh, Earth, except that you got a large sea right here that is in the middle of your in the middle right here of Eurasia, and uh, and of course like uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, the Arab countries are kind of connected to Africa. And uh, Indonesia is still continue, still kind of uh, connected to the Eura Eurasian continent right there. And South America and North America were not connected yet. So this is actually pretty, pretty interesting right there. But the Pliocene is where you're definitely going to see that land bridge really start to form. And that would be that that land bridge is going to be Panama. And yeah, so that would be the case right there is that land bridge would have been nearly fully formed and you would see that Great American Exchange uh, happening there, and that's gonna be the case right there for a lot of those animals. So the next episode will be on May 12th, 2022, and that episode will be a Q&A episode. And so if you got any questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life, feel free to email me at denochris71 at gmail.com. There's going to be my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts with Chris. Like the page, you actually post your questions in the comment section. Please put them in the comment section. Do not put them on Messenger. Messengers for private conversations. So please put them in the comment section. And also for you YouTubers out there, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And uh, according to my YouTube analytics, uh, a lot of you guys that check out my channel are not subscribed yet. So please feel 
feel free to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel and also share this share the videos and share the channel to anybody that is interested in dinosaurs and other prehistoric life feel free to do so and also stomp out not that notification bell so that way you can get weekly notifications of every video of every video that comes out every week because i do weekly videos and, uh, and that's what i do and of course uh for YouTubers out there, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section because I do read them all. Your questions do mean a lot in those community episodes. You guys are awesome for that. And also make sure you keep your questions short and to the point. You can also follow me on Instagram at dino.chris.pf. I post pretty cool stuff on there. You can also follow me on Twitter at C-S-G-R-A-L-L. -L. So it's, that's my Twitter page. I post pretty cool stuff on there as well. Also, take care of people around you. Notice if you're younger people, I don't make a list your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. It's the best motivation you can have a good education. It's very important to have a good education. So with a good education, you're going to get a good, good job in the future. And also, this kind of time, and I know things are getting close to normal, but make, if you're not vaccinated yet, please wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands, because that's very important. And also, make sure you get vaccinated, too, because that's what, very important, so that we, we get closer and closer to the normal that we had before all the things that happened. And so, yeah, and make sure, and, and also, I'll put uh, links in the description down below of uh, Automotive Top's papers uh, that you can check out and click on those links so that way you can check those papers out. And uh, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys next time.